Knicks lost their five game winning streak to the Mavericks. And during that game, it was a good amount of uh, times where we weren't doing the best on offense. Yeah, so during the game, there was a lot of times we were struggling on offense. You know, there's a few reasons, you know, we don't have IQ, we don't have RJ, uh, but we did get Ananobi. But watching Ananobi, he's not the most aggressive guy. You know, he's a, and listening to Raptors fans who've been watching this guy for the past, you know, five, six years or however been long he's been in the league. Biggest thing they've been saying is like, oh, we, we finally got offense now that we made the trade for IQ and RJ. They got more offense. Now, he is a pretty efficient guy, pretty efficient player. Uh, averages about 15 points a game. And he's been asking for a bigger role. But it doesn't seem like he you know, understands how to give himself a bigger role. Like, you got to take it. You know, you got to take more shots. He's not the most aggressive guy. He passes up, passes up a lot of shots, passes up a lot of opportunities to drive to the rim and kick out. And he's not the biggest engine you know he's not the best engine as a basketball player and what i describe as an engine you know is somebody who can draw double teams break down defenses and kick out the ball now rj barrett say what you want about him he's not you know the most efficient guy but he is a a offensive engine for a team and we've had three engines for on the Knicks. so we've had julius randall look at him drawing double teams look how many people around him right now yeah, four people around him, kicks it out, three-point shot. That's how you get good open shots. Jalen Brunson does the same thing. He's able to score in the paint. He's one of the best efficient scorers in the paint as a point guard in the league. And he's able to draw defenses and kick it out to open shooters. Create for himself. And OG Ananobi, you know, he drove right there, but he's more of a three and D type of guy. He can drive to the basket and he can finish efficiently, but he just doesn't do it often. He doesn't drive to the basket as much as he wants. He passes out a lot of open shots. So he's more of a three and D guy who has other abilities, but I wouldn't describe him as an engine. Now, can he grow into that? Possibly, yes, he can, but he's gonna have to do it. And I don't know if Tibbs is the guy to coach him to that, uh, since, you know, his team, Tibbs is more of a team coach, not of an individual coach. Now, which is why I think RJ Barrett is going to be better on the Raptors than he was on the Knicks. Man, we've been seeing that so far because that coach in Toronto is way a better coach for an individual. And uh, so we're going to see how that plays out. Been working out so great so far, though. But that bring me, brings me to my next point. Is, uh, I, I like the on no trade. You know, he's been... Well, what we needed on defense to help us really defend teams better. Although this game, you no, know, it was rough. One game, no, out of five, uh, out of six, I should say. And no, he's good three and three, good, uh, good three point shooter, good defender, uh, efficient guy overall. But we need another injury. Which brings me to should the Knicks trade for DeJounte Murray or Malcolm Brogdon? Or who should they trade for? And me personally, after watching last night's game, I'm going with DeJounte Murray. All right. Now, DeJounte Murray, he is an engine. All right. Let's check out his stats. He is a guy who goes into the paint, draws defenses, and able to kick him out. So, let's see. A lot of people have been doubting this, this, uh, this trade for some reason. But let's look at his stats. Although him and Murray, ha I mean, him and Trey Young haven't been the best duo. You no, know, they're not the best team right now. He's still doing really well this season. He's averaging 21 points a game. That's what he averaged when he was an all-star on the Spurs. So he's averaging 21 a game, exactly 21.1, and averaging five assists. Now, inside the paint, he, he's taking about 11 two-point attempts per game inside the three-point line and averaging 50% from the field. That's great. And watching his game, uh, he is the type of guy to be able to you know, get to the basket, finish, and really uh, be able to kick it out and get those assists for you. And also, from three-point land, he's shooting 39% so far. So he's shooting about 40% from three-point land. So you're still getting a good amount of production from him uh, from three. 
as you see these highlights here from DeJounte Murray, you're going to see a, a lot of him going to the basket and getting to the rim finishing. And also, as a defender, he's still averaging uh, close to 1.2, uh, one and a half steals a game. And people say, oh, he's not the as good of a defender as he was on the Spurs, but uh, you don't really lose your defense like that. And plus, last time, I remember a game last year when he played the Knicks, he beat him, He beat the Knicks by himself. I mean, he was just a, a superstar on both sides of the ball. He was scoring, he scored 36 points. And what's, what else did he do? And he had like five steals that game. So I think he's still a good defender. He worked well in the Tibbs system. He, you know, he needs defenders. And he's going to be able to play with the second unit like RJ Barrett did to help be able to replace the uh, IQ. Now, I like Deuce McBride, but, you know, he's he still has his limitations. And if we could get a, a guy like DeJounte Murray, does that make us contenders? I say yes. All right. Especially with if Mitch is able to come back in the regular season or in the playoffs if we have DeJounte Murray Trey Young but uh, and Julius Randle as our three engines you got all those other defenders OG Ananobi Mitch Robinson Isaiah Hartenstein Josh Hart Quentin Grimes in the lineup and you know we might if we do trade for uh, Murray we might lose Grimes but you got all those guys we could do something well we could we could really compete with the Boston Celtics because, you know, the Boston Celtics, they got tough, a lot tougher to beat when they got Drew Holiday. Well, if we get a guy like DeJounte Murray, that could really help us, you know, balance out the acquisition that they got with Drew Holiday. So look at him here. He's, you know, he's good from the mid-range, a good jump shooter. Look at him get to the paint, score, and one. Didn't get called, but look at him. Another good basket that's uh, not in the paint, but close to the basket. Look at him. Look at his shot profile, just all close to the rim. Look at him driving, pivot, spin. That's a similar shot that Jalen Brunson could give you. Look at him in the passing lane, stealing. We need more guys. We got Dante DiVincendo or somebody else who I didn't mention. So, and honestly, if we trade Quentin Grimes, Dante DiVincenzo just go back to the bench and probably be the first guy off the bench for Tibbs. And it just works out. It'll just work out perfectly. I think we should definitely trade for him now. Another guy, you know, instead of uh, let's say instead of Dejounte Murray, other people that have been mentioned is a guy like Malcolm Brogdon. Now, with Malcolm Brogdon, I thought so at first, but that would be to you know replace help bolster the bench. But I like Deuce McBride. He's given us some points in the last couple games. Uh, the, in the few little sparing minutes that we've seen him in, he's provided some points, provided defense. We know he could uh, defend, and I, I think I trust him as a uh, a person who can facilitate to be our second point guard. And he's gonna need time to get more comfortable, but Malcolm Brogdon, he's already there. You know, he was the uh, last year's sixth man of the year. And he's 31 right now, a little older, but you know we don't need him to be here for the next you know, 10 years. Just now, I'm just thinking this season, maybe next season. So he's averaging 14.9 off the bench right now. Uh, no, he's, he started some games too, but averaging 15 points a game and five assists. That's good stuff. And you're 77% from the free throw line. DeJounte is 81%. And let's see here. So within the Two three point line, he's averaging forty five percent. Although last year at fifty one, so he still has the ability to average that forty one percent from three. He's a really good three point shooter on five attempts a game. Now I wouldn't be mad either way, but I'm going with Dejounte. Michael Brockman, he's a good defender too, but Dejounte, man, that's he's. If we get Malcolm Brogdon, I still feel like we're not really changing our potential. Uh, as far as us you know, possibly getting to the Eastern Conference Finals. So we're, we're still most likely to get to the Eastern Conference Finals. But with DeJounte Murray, we could possibly get to the Eastern Conference Finals and win and get to the finals. And depending on who we uh, match up with in the finals, you know, if, it, if it's 
against let's say the nuggets that might be pretty tough uh but that still you know gives us another wing defender to deal with all the wings that uh that denver has and we'll be able to match up there wonderfully and yeah man i, I just think that you know if we're able to get the jante murray we have the best shot to beat boston in boston let's say especially if let's say you know because injuries are a part of sports and if somebody on boston gets injured you know i'm thinking somebody like kp that gives us a better shot as well now i'm not wishing injury on anybody it's just a part of the, the game and as far as the, the mix you know, of dejounte and brunson now i think uh with dejounte you have a better fit with dejounte than you would have with trey young because you no know, trey young is way more ball don dominant than uh, brunson is and I don't know, i've heard somebody say that brunson might be more ball dominant than trey young is but that's not true at all you know, trey young i mean uh, brunson again last season and this season he spent time with two other guys who were what i call engines for a squad with rj and julia so those guys needed the ball in their hands and had a high usage rate to be able to be effective but you know with the jante he's way more of a guy who, who can slide in next to to brunson and be a factor on both sides of the ball not just offensively and we already looking for another engine og and Anobi, he's not going to be that just looking at what raptors fans are saying he's not going to be that guy who's going to be that you no know, what he look at what the johnson's doing now this in the paint scoring we're not going to see too much of that from og Ananobi. now he might go in the paint and, and touch the paint a, a little bit and pass it out but he's not going to be the guy who's driving all the way to the rim and scoring on a night to night basis uh, on a, a possession to possession basis now he, he does move the ball well but he's not aggressive enough. But DeJounte does not have that issue. I think it's going to be a seamless fit. And that's who I'd rather have you know, the next trade for before the trade deadline. And you know, that'll possibly get us to be a contender. So we'll see what they do. Trade line, uh, trade deadline is coming. So we'll see what they, what they end up doing. That's my thoughts on it. That's how I feel about it. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Home we get to my next thousand subscribers ASAP. Appreciate you guys for tuning in and check me out next time.